I welcome you all to the DBMCI channel. So I am myself Dr. Rajesh Gubba. I am the general medicine educator and a cardiologist. So in this session, I will be discussing the clinical ECG 3. So before going ahead with the session, let me just inform you that I will be taking a live session on the ECG in which I will be discussing the detailed discussion of ECG that is all the way from ECG basics to the advanced level of the ECG and that particular session will be on 29th of January on the eGurukul app and it will be a live session and the timings of the session will be from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. and trust me after the entire session you will become completely thorough on the ECG how to analyze and how to diagnose the ECG. So this particular session will be useful for third and fourth MBBS students, interns, post interns, post graduates and as well as junior and senior registrars. Having said this, let me discuss the clinical ECG of today. So I have a ECG of a patient with a 40 year old male who presented with a 60 minute history of the central chest pain. And ECG suggested the anterior wall MI. Patient was thrombolyzed with streptokinase. After one hour of thrombolysis, the cardiac monitor showed rhythm abnormality for which the 12 lead ECG was taken and the ECG is as follows. Now, what is the diagnosis of this particular ECG? The options are ventricular tachycardia, ventricular fibrillation, AIVR, which is nothing but accelerated idioventricular rhythm and complete heart block. Let me tell you, all the options which have been given to you are the expected complications in a patient with myocardial infarction. So, seeing the rhythm abnormality in a patient who has been thrombolyzed, right, or seeing the rhythm abnormality in a patient with MI, that is very alarming situation, right? And you have to handle the patient very carefully, otherwise you will be losing the patient. But at the same time, you should be able to diagnose that rhythm abnormality, whatever you're seeing. So now this is the ECG. So you should be able to identify what is the rhythm abnormality and what we have to do this particular patient. So that is the next challenging step for you. What you will do for this patient and you are the, the registrar in the ICU, right? And the concerned cardiologist is away from the patient doing some procedure in the cath lab for the other patient and you have to handle this scenario. What will you do now? So you should be able to diagnose what is this rhythm abnormality. So what is this particular rhythm abnormality? This rhythm abnormality is accelerated idioventricular rhythm. Now, first of all, let me tell you like how to identify the accelerated idioventricular rhythm. So first and foremost, in patients with accelerated idioventricular rhythm, the ventricular complexes, if you see, you have a broad QRS complex. So the QRS complexes will be more than 120 milliseconds duration. That is one important abnormality. And the second important abnormality is you have no P wave, right? P wave is absent. And followed by that, if you take the ventricular rate, it will be in a range of 100 to 120 per minute. Right, the ventricular rate will be in a rate of 100 to 120 per minute. These three are the important changes of accelerated idioventricular rhythm. Now, why does this occur and in which patients does this AIVR occurs and what we need to do this patient? Let me tell you. See, this particular AIVR, it is a characteristic feature of the myocardial reperfusion. So, this rhythm in the ECG, we call it as the reperfusion arrhythmia or reperfusion rhythm. That means the vessel which has been blocked, once it is open, there is perfusion which is regained to the dead myocardium. So that particular dead myocardium which has regained the perfusion will start throwing some abnormal impulses and that will make the individual to have this particular AIVR which is nothing but accelerated idioventricular rhythm. So why is that there is no P wave in this patient because the origin of the impulse is from the ventricle. So that is the reason why you don't have a P wave. So when the ventricular rhythm, you will be having only QRS complex. 
And why there is YQRS complex? Because the origin of the impulse is not from the SA node. The origin of the impulse is from the ventricle where you have a slow conduction of velocity. And that is the reason why the QRS duration is more than 120 milliseconds. Having said this, now what are the conditions where you will have this AIVR? AIVR you will have immediately after myocardial reperfusion. See our patient had an anterior wall MI. He was thrombolized with the streptokinase and immediately after one hour you are having this particular rhythm which is nothing but accelerated idioventricular rhythm. Now what about the other options? See you take the other options like ventricular tachycardia. The rate will be in a range of 200 to 300. Ventricular fibrillation, the rate will be in a range of 300 to 400 and patient with complete heart block, they will have bradycardia. So your A, B and D are ruled out by their rate, whereas AIVR is taken into consideration because it is a reperfusion rhythm which occurs immediately after the thrombolizing the patient, right? And what are the other conditions where you can have this AIVR can be seen in patients with dilated cardiomyopathy, ischemic cardiomyopathy, myocarditis and as well as recurrent, I mean sorry, rheumatic or congenital heart disease. So these are all the conditions where you can have this particular reperfusion rhythm or AIVR which is nothing but accelerated idioventricular rhythm. Now, so you are the attending doctor to this concerned patient. What will you do now? Right? So, what you have to do in this patient is please don't get panicked by seeing the AIVR rhythm. I'll repeat this point. Please don't get alarmed or please don't get panicked when you see this AIVR rhythm. No specific treatment is required for the AIVR. Until the individual is asymptomatic, you need not worry. Right, don't worry at all. So, it is a self remitting rhythm and it will be there only for a short period of time. Right, so you need not worry at all. No treatment is required if the individual is hemodynamically stable. If the individual is hemodynamically unstable in any arrhythmias, what did I tell you? You have to do a DC cardioversion. Right, that's a different story. But our patient is hemodynamically stable, right, and no specific treatment is required. So that is what is the clinical ECG of the day. That is accelerated idioventricular rhythm. So having said this, I wish you a thank you and have a good day. And in order to learn these type of the abnormal ECGs, I'll be coming live on 29th to discuss the entire ECG from the basics to the advanced level. And let me assure you that you will become thorough and perfect after attending this particular session on the ECG. Thank you very much. See you in the next clinical ECG tomorrow.